hello, hello. So we've right. got people coming in um, slowly but surely, about like 42 so far. I think uh, should be anticipating approximately uh, 100 or more. Um, but in the meantime, you know, for those of you that are here already, I'm glad to see you make it. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. Um, so today, for the last session, last but not least, on the first uh, of the, um, on the last of the first session, we have Bowen, uh, co-founder and CTO of Cizik, and he is going to be talking about hardware acceleration of uh, ZKP. And with that being said, I'll hand over the mic to you. Yes, thanks. Uh, so uh, should I begin now? Yeah, yeah, whenever you want. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, awesome. So uh, thanks to Shumo and the entire uh, mental team for hosting this talk. Uh, it's been a really amazing day and I'm really uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm the co-founder and uh, CTO of Sysic. Uh, and I will be talking about um, our thoughts and story of building high performance DK hardware today. Uh, unlike most of the uh, crypto folks here today, I, I come from a traditional hardware background. Um, and I'm the guy actually leading the hardware engineer while, uh, while my co-founder, Leo, and our uh, primary advisor, Jim Fei, are the uh, crypto guys in our team. Uh, which means uh, my talk will be more uh, centered on the hardware side. And I hope uh, this could be an interesting condiment for our community so that you guys can understand what's going on behind your provers. Uh, so, okay, let's begin. Um, so right now, I think our community will mostly agree that uh, zero knowledge proof is one of the uh, most promising track out there. Uh, many of the level one and the level two solutions are uh, building on top of that and expanding on top of that. And recently, the proof of reserve demand from those centralized exchanges are also rising and the entire community is calling and watching it. So it's really uh, has been a really hot uh, topic and a chat in our com community. Um, and however, one thing that we found that really prevents CKP from getting even widely adopted is the performance bottleneck. Uh, we did some performance oriented profiling on some of the uh, most popular proven systems on the market, for example, Halo 2, Rapid Snack, Hyperplunk. And we found that uh, MSM, uh, short for multi-scalar multiplication, uh, and NTT, which is short for um, number theoretical transform, uh, those two components are the two biggest common uh, bo performance bottlenecks across different proven systems. Um, of course, the exact number will vary with um, different proven systems. For example, as we see, 60% uh, of the execution time goes to MSM and about 10% to 15% goes to NTT for Halo 2. But if we speak about, um, if we speak about hyperplong proof system, the distribution will change to about 40% goes to MSM and another 40% goes to MLE uh, uh, for the, for the hyperplong. But the general takeaway message is that about 80% to 90% of the entire prover execution time can easily be migrated to, to use hardware acceleration and can be drastically increasing its performance. Um, and we realize that the community will need ZK hardware in near future, and there will be value in it during the summer. Uh, so we designed to found a company and start to raise money to run this as our main business. Um, however, there are multiple design choices exist for, for ZK hardware, FPGA, GPU, and the ultimate ASIC. A lot of VCs and PEs have been asking this question. A lot of projects from the, from the community have also been asking the same question. FPGA, GPU, ASIC, which one is better eventually? Um, to, be, to be honest, we had no answer to the problem at that moment during the summer. But we do believe that the short-term and the mid-term competition will be primarily just between FPJ and, and the GPU. And ASIC will decisively win the whole market in the long run. Our uh, team after it hits um, was strong in FPJ and ASIC. So uh, choosing FPJ and ASIC become our natural choice. But the problem lies on the funding when we talk about the ultimate ASIC solution. We all know that ASIC table is really, really expensive. Easily tens of millions of dollars go into toilet if you don't handle that carefully. So our strategy is that we can, we can build FPGA prototype system as the first step, 
to test our design, our capability, and our hardware supply chain behind us. And then we can use this to convince the market and the investors and our potential customers um, to, to, to see uh, that uh, we are ready and capable to throw that tens of millions of dollars into the actual development and the building of the ultimate ASIC solution. Therefore, uh, we formed a team with just five people by the end of the summer and started to work on uh, the first generation FPGA based MSM acceleration, uh, while at the same time preparing the future expensive ASIC takeout. Um, we, yeah, sorry. Uh, so next slide. Uh, so we complete our um, first generation MSM acceleration design by the end of October uh, with a lot of optimization in the hardware pipeline and still rapidly evolving at this moment, even at this moment. Um, it's a fully pipeline architecture, which means it can ab absorb input data without any stores, which is really good for software developers. Um, and one such pipeline will form a PE, which is processing elements, which is short for, yeah, um, and one such process element is enough to handle the entire MSM operation. Uh, but if we can distribute the input data into multiple PEs, we can do parallel opera uh, operations and the performance also grow linearly with the number of PEs in a PE cluster. Uh, so for the hardware, uh, we choose a special packaging version of VGA chip from Xilinx. Uh, the PCB board is also highly customized to stable uh, to provide stable power delivery at higher frequency. Um, and also we managed to, to, to run the entire design at 300 megahertz. Uh, and the results look pretty good. Um, we publicly announced the result at the end of October at the Berkeley uh, Zero Knowledge Proof Workshop. Um, I believe many of you have been um, yeah, uh, in, in the workshop uh, as we did, it seems to be the most powerful FPGA acceleration design on MSM by far, about five times faster than Pipe MSM and two times faster than Cyclone MSM. Uh, it was greatly welcomed by investors and the community. Uh, we received far more tensions and investors um, than we did during the summer. So it's a great thing. Uh, so we began to, uh, in close contact with the amazing mentor teams, and that's pretty much the reason why we are here today. Um, and our team was greatly encouraged by this announcement. But at the same time, uh, we are fully aware that uh, it was announced before the prize. And we are aware of the fact that some of the strongest competitors haven't announced their results yet. And we believe some of the competitors do not even participate in the Z prize at all because they do not uh, want to open source their design. So it was a still a really challenging problem to see how FPGA compared with GPU in terms of performance, power, and price, and uh, we can and how we can catch up and uh, surpass the performance of Z Price winners. Um, so, uh, sorry, yeah. So after some competitive analysis, there we go. So it turns out our first generation FPGA solution is still uh, far from Super Rational's open source the GPU solution. Um, to be honest, and so let's take a look at the table. Uh, it shows the performance comparison. As you can see, our first generation design is about just half the performance when compared with uh, a certain uh, ATTI GPU with a super rational uh, open source uh, solution running on top of that. And when it comes to the latest generation of GPU, which is 1490, um, we are just about one third of performance. And so that's really an alarming call. And it's not just us. If you look at the entire uh, performance um, chart from the Z price, you will notice that the entire FPG track of Z price uh, is generally about two times slower than, uh, than, than the, than the uh, winners from the GPU track. So um, after that, we received many more questions from the market is that uh, they're wondering, is FPGA still competitive against GPU at all? Uh, so we have been working extremely hard on the next generation design since the October announcement. And we do believe that the answer is still yes. So um, the currently ongoing next generation design, we call it Mars MSM, is based on a, a whole new customized FPGA accelerator card uh, with our customized service interconnect between multiple chips on board and also a customized PCIe interconnect, uh, interconnect 
between the main CPU and our FPGA accelerator cars. And one notable thing is that this is a MSM and MTT unified solution, which means we will be running MSM and MTT, and MTT uh, on the exactly same hardware. And we will be using this Mars MSM to compete with top tier single GPU solution. And on top of that, we have a massively connected FPGA system. We call it Solar MSM. It's our trump card against top tier multi GPU solution on the market. It's also an MSM and NTT unified design. It has customized rack level thermal solution, thermal solution, and also rack level power delivery to unleash the full performance of, of our design. And our entire hardware is packed into a high density chassis, which is about 50% to 75% uh, of the size of a typical GPU server. And we will be using this solar MSM system to compete with top tier multi GPU solution. So how about the performance of our next generation FPGA server for the ZKP Pooper? Uh, we believe the competition among ZK hardware uh, will be escalated to be between uh, massively connected GPUs and massively connected FPGAs starting from just next month. We anticipate uh, there will be more than a couple of highly customized GPU servers and highly customized FPJ servers on the market by the first quarter of 2023. And we are prepared for it and are thrilled to, to join this battle. Um, so as you can see from the table, the Z price winner from the GPU track has about three times to seven times higher performance than our first generation design, uh, which seems to be a really daunting gap. But our solar MSM uh, system will be taking the performance leadership back with about eight times higher performance than the Z-Price winners. And it will be literally a, a monster machine. We want to inject confidence into the market to show that what ZK hardware can do and what our, what our team can achieve uh, in a couple of months. Uh, the physical hardware design of the solar MSM system is already completed last week, and it's already in the fab uh, for the final uh, manufacturing, we will be delivering the first uh, solar MSM server to our customers and potential customers um, for, for a trial run next month, which is January 2023. And we are still working on uh, getting more optimization deployed in, in the uh, Mars MSM card and also the solar MSM system to make it even faster. And we are discussing about possible conditional open access to the public after the trial run uh, with our customers and potential customers. So everyone can, can witness the, 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 the monster performance of the solar MSM system. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, our efforts uh, on, on FPJ prototype system is actually uh, paving the way for our ultimate AS ASIC solution. Um, so we are happy to share that currently we have more than 10 engineers on board already, and we are working towards a 12 nanometer ASIC design uh, as you can see from the preliminary layout of our um, final chip on the, on the right hand side, uh, that the performance we expect from the, from the ASIC chip is that it can compete with top tier multiple GPU solution uh, with just a single chip. And if we can connect several such chips together, it will be deliver a uh, crushing level performance when it is fighting with a top level uh, multiple GPU solution. And it's also a MSM entity all in one design and we'll be having about five to 10 times higher energy efficiency. And if we can ship the chips to, to the community in large volume, we can uh, uh, shop the price to be just a fraction of what you guys can see from a typical GPU server from the market. Um, so our final architecture will be a fusion of FPJ and, and, and ASIC because we do want to have the highest level of programmability of FPJ so that we can deploy some uh, project specific operations on FPGAs, for example, the witness generation procedure for Halo 2. Uh, and we can also deploy the common operations such as MSM and, NT and NTT onto our ASIC chip so that we can deliver highest possible level of performance and energy efficiency to all the, uh, to all the proven systems. Um, so here is the status of our current team. Uh, me and Leo are the two co-founders of SciSig, and Genfei is our primary algorithm advisor, and we're the guys running in the foreground. 
uh, and all the background, we have a 10% engineering team, and I'm also doing coding with the team at, as well. And much of the work that we present, uh, we, we present here today, uh, actually should be credited to, to the background uh, engineering team. And, and they're just awesome. Uh, we will be quickly uh, expanding the team to be around uh, 15 engineers in the first quarter of 2023 to prepare for the 12 nanometer async takeoff. Um, so as a final wrap up, the, the takeaway points are that um, the hardware acceleration will be a really helpful boost for high performance proven system. Uh, you guys can, can, can see 10 times or even 100 times higher performance uh, when, when you guys are running uh, on, a, on a specialized hardware for MSM entity and uh, other operations for a ZK prover. Um, and our solar MSM FPJ system will achieve uh, approximately one second for two to the power of 30 MSM operation by the first quarter of 2023. And our 12 nanometer based ASIC chips will hit the market by the first quarter of 2024. Um, and uh, welcome to follow us on Twitter and Telegram. And here are the QR codes for, for our Twitter accounts and our also our Telegram uh, community channel. And we'll also welcome to um, send, uh, uh, send us your questions and uh, request for 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 uh, for information sharing uh, through email uh, at info at .xyz. Um, Yeah, and that's all for my presentation. And I'm uh, will be happy to take more questions. Thank you, very guys. All right, thank you, Bowen. I think uh, we've got some time for questions this time around because we're going into a break. Um, but also, amazing presentation got a lot of interest from the community. I saw the first question um, that was actually in the comment section, so I just moved it over to the questions. But uh, the first one is, what clock speeds are you running these FPGAs at for your results? Is there any overclocking happening? Um, I would say yes. Uh, so overclocking is part of our design because if you want to survive from this furiously com uh, competitive market, you have to squeeze out every single bit of performance out of your hardware. So, and that's why I, men I just mentioned we customize our PCB board and our entire rack level power delivery uh, to make sure that our chips can run at higher frequency um, uh, so that there won't be power integrity problem for the hardware. Um, yeah. Got it, thank you. And um, is communication really a bottleneck for MSM? Yes, definitely. And that's the reason why I also mentioned we also customized our FPGA interconnect between uh, our uh, uh, between the CPU in our system and also our uh, FPGA accelerator card cluster. Yes. You need to you need to boost the performance for the PCIe interconnect. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the same level of performance. Yes. Got it. Okay. And final question is, how do you compete with an NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card? Yes, that's a very good question. So as you can, uh, let me go back to my uh, previous slides. So as you can see, our first generation design, it's about um, three times to seven times uh, slower uh, than 4090. So it's really a daunting guy. Um, so we found out that if we uh, push the, the, the design to the limit with uh, with higher level of customization of, with our board, with our FPJ chip, and also running all the, uh, all the hardware multipliers at a higher frequency level and higher utilization level. Um, and we can connect multiple such FPJ cards to form a massively connected FPJ cluster. As you can see here, we are expecting a eight times higher performance than what you can see from a single 1490 GPU. So that's our answer to, to the problem. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. And um, thank you for the presentation overall, Bolin. I think that was amazing. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that we're going to be uh, taking into consideration over here at Mantha based on your talk as well. Um, so audience, right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to move us into the break session. And we're going to play a little game before everyone goes on break. We are approximately 10 minutes behind. Um, but after the break, which will shorten to about five minutes, uh, we'll start with uh, session two. 
And you definitely don't want to miss session two because we've got a lot of amazing speakers coming on as well. Uh, first, we'll have Todd from Manta Network, and then we will have Sebastian Loduca from ZK, or he's a ZK researcher, um, talking about Ponte 2. And then we've got Brian from Risk Zero, Wei Dai, a cryptography researcher formerly at uh, Bain Capital. And then finally, we'll uh, talk with Rahul from Jump Crypto. So with that being said, I'm going to end the session here. Thank you again, Bolin, and we will yeah, uh, move thank you. into the break session and have those questions.